Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, we'll give it a couple more minutes um, just because there are so many different time zones represented across the Pacific. We want to give everyone a chance um, to join in. I know it's early for most of you. Um, just a, a note, we will um, be recording this webinar to uh, um, have for reference for all of you to watch at your convenience um, if you want to go back and watch and for all those unable to join us this morning um, and that will be posted on our web page I'll explain more about that in a bit we'll go ahead and get started in about two minutes or so if you cannot hear me or you cannot see the screen go ahead and let me know in the chat box I'll also make a note for all those that may not hear me Awesome. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, like I said, this will be recorded. So if you want to go back and reference it at any time prior to the application submission, you are welcome to. And I'll give more information later on on where to find it. Um, first and foremost, I just wanted to say hello and welcome to all of you joining us today. This is the first webinar for the 2019 iteration of the Young Pacific Leaders program, the Small Grants Program, also known as the YPL Small Grants Program. I know a few of you online, but for those of you who I don't know, my name is Phoebe Hybeck and I am a Program Development Officer on the Program Development Team at Cultural Vistas. For all of those who have worked with us in the past, hello! Bula to this month's 2019 conference attendees. It's nice to see some of you online. Um, and for those of you who we have not met before, it is great to virtually meet you all. Thanks so much for joining us today. To give a little background for those of you who have not worked with Cultural Vistas previously, I'll just share a little bit about the organization. We are a nonprofit international exchange organization and the implementing partners for the 2019 YPL conference and 2018 and 2019 small grants program, which all is funded by the US Department of State, US Embassy at New Zealand. As we go along, please do feel free to chat um, in the chat box as your questions pop up. I'll go ahead and address those at the end. Um, but yeah, feel free to say hello. It looks like we've got a, a good number on. Um, and like I said, you can use this recording for reference. It'll be posted um, later on this week. So jumping right in, um, I know I gave some background on cultural vistas. Here's a brief bit of background on YPL. Um, the YPL program is a youth leadership development program. Like I said, it's organized by the U.S. Department of State. The program started in 2013 and has held six regional conferences across the Pacific region. Most recently this month in Suva, Fiji. The YPL community consists of many bright young leaders ages 20 to 35 years old from Australia, the Cook Islands, Fiji, the Federated States of Micronesia, the islands of French Polynesia, Kiribati, the Marshall Islands, 
Nauru, New Caledonia, New Zealand, Niue, Palau, Papua New Guinea, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Tonga, Tuvalu, Vanuatu, Wallace and Fatuna, and the American Affiliated Pacific, which includes American Samoa, Guam, the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas Islands, and Hawaii. Um, so we have pretty great regional diversity within the Pacific through this program. Um, more specifically though, today I wanna talk to you about the YPL Small Grants. Um, like I mentioned, there was a 2018 iteration. This was when the program was launched. The program is an opportunity for the YPL alumni to apply for seed fun funding, excuse me, to implement innovative programs um, throughout the Pacific region focused on improving communities, countries, and the region in one or more of the program's core pillars. To help you all prepare, um, I'm hoping that we have some interested uh, applicants online today. Um, what we'll be doing is we'll be hosting these webinars um, with information to help you all with project work plans as well as your proposal applications throughout the pre-application submission period. This first webinar is to help those in interested teams better understand what is required for the program, um, how to turn your ideas into a work plan, and also how to write a compelling competitive proposal application. This might be new for some of you in terms of submitting a proposal application, and Cultural Vistas is really here to help guide you and provide advice, um, as well as resources that may be useful as you're developing your project and your proposal. There will be three other webinars to help answer questions and also help you prepare for the application and proposal submission. The webinars will be held at 9 o'clock a.m. New Zealand time. So the program itself is out of the U.S. Embassy in New Zealand, so we'll base all of our timing off of New Zealand time, just since there are so many time zones represented across the Pacific. Um, these will happen on Tuesdays. Our next webinar will be on April 2nd, so that's Tuesday, April 2nd at 9 a.m., and I'll be hosting all of the webinars as we go through. We'll then have a third webinar on the 9th of April and the 16th of April, which is just prior to the application deadline. The application deadline, and I'll mention this many, many times as we go through, is the 18th of April, 2019 at 11.59 p.m., and that is New Zealand time. A reminder of each of the different webinars will go um, out via email, via the YPL Small Grants email um, prior to that webinar, giving you a, a taste of what topics will be covered and also including the login information if you happen to misplace that. Um, we'll also be posting reminders on the YPL Facebook page. If you didn't receive a reminder from us previously, so we've sent out two informational emails about the webinars and also the program. If you didn't receive those, go ahead and shoot us an email to yplgrants at culturalvistas.org and we'll be sure to make sure that you are on our email list. For those of you joining in, not to worry, we um, have just covered kind of a, a brief background on um, the webinars, and you're welcome to reference the recording that will be posted on the YPL um, Small Grants webpage later on this week. So as we go through, webinar attendance is not required. Um, however, we do strongly encourage you to attend or reference the recording. Um, as there will be information provided to help assist with different application questions and also we give you the chance to ask us questions that you may have as you're kind of going through the proposal submission process. Um, if you cannot attend live, not to fret. Um, 
like I said, we'll be posting this on the, the web page. Um, and for those of you, as you reference that video, if you do have questions, you can also email those to YPLGrants at culturalvistas.org and your questions will be answered and possibly discussed um, further during the following webinar. Um, so before we just jump right into the different proposal pieces, I want to make sure everyone can hear me and see what's on the screen. If not, go ahead and chat us and we'll do our best to troubleshoot. Looks like we are all good um, this far. If at any point you get, get disconnected, no problem, go ahead and log back on and we'll make sure that you have um, the information. Awesome, yeah, so we'll, that's just where it should be. Um, with that, we're gonna go ahead and move to the next slide. Let's see if technology will cooperate. Awesome. So on the screen at the moment, you should be seeing a brief program timeline for the 2018 iteration of the YPL Small Grants Program. As I mentioned, we'll have four total webinars, um, this one included, leading up to the program application deadlines. You'll see the different dates as well as the times and webinar topics um, on the screen at the moment. So just here we have webinar two, webinar three, and webinar four. Um, also listed here is the deadline. You'll hear me, hear me say this probably about a hundred times over our next few webinars, but just to, to make sure that it's fresh, the deadline is the 18th of April at 11.59 p.m. New Zealand time. You'll also see here when we are expecting to notify our project, select those projects that have been selected um, and the team. So we're aiming to do that in late May. Um, and this is to, to get everyone um, prepared, those that are selected for the um, program, to get you prepared for the kickoff workshop, which will be happening in Auckland from the 24th through the 27th of June. And um, once our selected grantees are finalized, like I mentioned, we will be hosting the kickoff workshop. And this workshop will be to help um, those selected teams prepare the three core team members um, in order to begin implementing their projects. The full implementation period of the program will be from July, so the, basically the end of June, right after the kickoff workshop through December 2019, completing the full program when we have the debriefing seminar in January 2020. Um, so all of our core team members, and I'll talk more about that as we go along, what a core team member is, um, they are all, all three are required to attend the kickoff workshop and then just the project team leader is required to attend the debriefing seminar. All of the costs for participation in those kickoff and debriefing events are covered by Cultural Vistas and may all the arrangements are made by Cultural Vistas. There's no need to include this in your project team's budget. So to start thinking about your work plan and narrative description of your project, I want to direct everyone to the website that we have, specifically for our small grants program. So you'll find this website is culturalvistas.org slash YPL. So you should be seeing this website on your screen at the moment. From this page, you will find all of the information um, that you need for the proposal submission, as well as different frequently asked questions about the program. So you'll see just here, 
is the dates and times of our webinars. And then here is our frequently asked questions section. Um, I do encourage you to look through all of this um, because it's super helpful as you go through and prepare your application. Um, here you'll also be able to access the recorded webinars. So check back at the end of the day tomorrow and you'll be able to find the recordings here as well. So next and most importantly on this page you'll find the application and how to access that. So you can click here on the Apply Now button just here or at the top you'll see the Apply um, tab on the toolbar. If you have at any point any issues accessing the application via any of those options, go ahead and just let us know um, via email. I know too sometimes internet connectivity can be difficult. Um, so if you need a PDF application, feel free to go ahead and send an email to the YPL Grants email and we'll be sure to get you a copy of that. Um, that will be ready at the end of this week. So we'll go ahead and get um, that information out to all of you, the, all of those who've requested one so far. So I'll go ahead and show you our application portal. So this is our application portal. This is what you'll be seeing once you click on those, um, one of those two options to apply. Before applying, it is important to make sure that you're eligible to apply um, and that you understand the different requirements for the project application in the proposal. You'll see the application requirements on the, the screen. Just here, I'll do my best to highlight. But just to reiterate, we'll kind of walk through them. Um, so one of the team members, this is the core team member, and our webinar next week will talk about the core team members and putting together a team. Um, but at least one of those three core team members, so either the project leader, the project treasurer, or the project secretary, must be a former YPL conference attendee. So you'll see a brief description of those roles here. Uh, but at least one of those members needs to be a YPL um, alumni. All of our core team members must be between the ages of 20 through 35. The projects that you submit um, or the project proposals you submit must be um, in at least one of the four YPL pillar themes. Um, so that's education, economic and social development, environment and resource management, and civic leadership. So one of those themes must be touched upon in your um, project idea. Are US citizens, I know we have a number of US territories represented in the program. Um, those applying must demonstrate that their project is regionally focused outside of the US and could be a part of a cross-country team or provide an exchange element to that. All of our projects um, submitted should demonstrate a program timeframe matching the YPL small grants implementation period, which will begin following the kickoff workshop going through December 2019 and ending at the debriefing seminar in January 2020. One of the requirements that's not included on this list, and I just want to mention it um, because it is important to note that unfortunately our 2018 YPL small grant recipients are um, ineligible to reapply for this year. So it doesn't look like we have anyone online, but in case someone references this later on, um, sadly, uh, 2019 um, applicants, or excuse me, 2018 um, recipients are not eligible to reapply. So at the top of the application page here, you'll see different pieces of information. Um, one of the, the most important pieces here, um, and just a reminder that while you are eligible to apply for funding up to 10,000 US dollars, um, you must be able to demonstrate in your budget that the anticipated 
expenses match the funding you are requested. So I'm sure some of you have seen that one of our webinar topics is going through the budget, and I'll talk more about that in webinar number three. Um, but just want to mention that as you guys are starting to think about your projects and the budgets, um, you're starting to, to develop those and put them together. On the top part, like I mentioned, you see the description of roles. One of the things we emphasize for the program is that there will be three core team members. And this is because for a number of reasons, really, um, most notably dividing the core responsibilities among three core team members help keep help keeps um, or helps to keep excuse me the project balance and um, kind of share the responsibility so it's not all on one person to make sure that the project is implemented successfully so we do um, emphasize that you have to have three core team members if you're applying with less than three core team members that doesn't help demonstrate project sustainability and so we are strongly encouraging that you do find three core team members to fill um, those roles. Everyone on the team does not have to be a YPL alumni, but at least one core member does. Um, I apologize for reiterating a lot of the information, but I just want to make sure that um, everyone has it in case there's any confusion. We'll discuss a lot more about the core team members and organizing a project in next week's webinar. Um, but for now, it's just important to remember that as you put together your project proposal, you should include all required aspects of the application and the project. This is in extremely critical, um, especially for highly competitive grant funding opportunities um, by including all of the requirements it signals that you as a project leader and your core team members are able to comply with the different requirements as well as indicates your ability to follow the structure and request from the funder um, so once you confirmed that you're eligible it's time to go ahead and look at what the application and proposal should include and the dates surrounding the application um, so we've had a couple, I'll just step aside for a second, um, we've had a couple of questions come in and what I'll do is I'll just make note of those and I'll go through them all at the end of the webinar. So you'll see once you read through all of the different requirements, um, you'll see here the start of the application. So the application form, this online form that we're looking at right now, is the first of the five required pieces for your proposal submission. The fully completed application includes the completed online application, so this application we're looking at, the uploaded documents, which include resumes or CVs of all of the three core team members, project, a project abstract, um, which is a maximum of 100 words, a project description, which is a maximum of 1,000 words, and a completed provided budget um, up to 10,000 USD, and then also uploaded passport information for all three core team members. The first section of the application you'll see is for background information on the core project team. The project leader is the overall head of the project, um, you are the proposing and will be in charge of the project implementation during the grant period. This individual will be the main person in contact with Cultural Vistas for project updates. Um, and this person can be the one to submit the application information on behalf of the other core team members, which are the project treasurer and the project secretary, or you can do it in tandem with them if they prefer to complete their section themselves. I will note that you have to submit all of the information on the application at one time. You cannot go back and edit. Um, so just keep that in mind that it's useful to have everything ready to go as you're sitting down to apply. The biographical information that we request um, should match 
the passport information that you have and this being because we use that information to make travel arrangements for the different workshops that we host um, as well as match it with your different projects so make sure that you're matching the information you're providing to the passport that you have and are submitting It's also really, really important, I can't emphasize this enough, um, that you include or provide the email address that you most frequently use, as this is how we will be contacting our selected applicants um, and also communicating the different program related details. So do make sure that it's an email that you check often um, and use frequently. As you scroll through, like I said, you'll see all this different background information requested for the different project core team members. And then you'll see requested project background information. Here's where you'll need to include the name of your project. We encourage you to think of something catchy um, as that's very helpful when it comes to the marketing and sustainability of the project. Um, we also request that you indicate what YPL theme the project is associated with and a brief description of your team's involvement with YPL. So you can select multiple themes on this section in the YPL themes um, drop down. You'll see there are all four listed. And if you have one or more members that have been involved with the YPL program within your core team, you can indicate that here as well. So that's just in this section and this section. <clears throat> we also ask you to indicate the home nation of your project team members, and you can select multiple from this list. And you'll see um, for those French territories and also the US affiliated Pacific, please go ahead and list out where you're coming from in those different sections as well. One of the really important pieces in this section is that you include the cities, the city or region um, in which the project will be implemented. So just here, listing as well the countries where the project will take place. So your project can be collaborative across countries in the YPL program region. And so all of the countries listed within the YPL program um, or it can take just place in one. Um, totally up to you, but we do ask you to provide us information on those um, countries that will be represented. So the biggest piece of the application will take place right here in the supporting document section. Um, you'll see that we have quite a few uploads required. So we have five in total that are required and then one optional one and i'll just kind of go through and give a brief explanation on the required ones as well as the optional so first is the project abstract and this is a required brief summary of your project and 100 words or less we ask that you describe the main goal of your project the main audience and what it is you will be doing through the project. This should be your elevator pitch. I know that's a common term used um, today uh, around the world, an elevator pitch. You know, what is your 30 seconds describing um, your project? And so this should really be concise, but um, provide enough detail for someone without a lot of background in the project area that you'll be working in um, so that you'll be, they'll be able to understand what it is you're trying to do. So like I said, it's pretty short. Um, and then we ask that you upload it in the different sections, the corresponding, you'll see the choose file um, button under each corresponding document. The next required section is the project description. And this is where you can go into detail and provide a narrative on your work plan as well as the different steps you'll be taking to achieve your goal with the project. Um, this is really your chance to provide um, details and also interesting um, capture your audience. This is kind of that document where you can do so. Um, we ask that you do provide some detail as to the funding amount you're requesting as it relates to your project goal. 
Um, like I said, this is where you can describe your project and the longer term impact or plans um, that you have for impact that you foresee. Um, this is in a th the maximum is a thousand words for this, um, and we hope that you're able to provide a thorough and compelling overview of the project. For both the project abstract and the project description, you can include headers and footers. This is just kind of a logistics thing. Um, those will not count towards your word count. I know with a thousand words and, and a hundred words especially, making sure that you can take advantage of every one of those is important. And so we will not count your headers and footers um, towards that. It is recommended that you do provide some sort of branding to your documents that you upload um, so we can associate those with your project. Those documents that are excluded with the branding request is um, the, are the CVs as well as the budget um, because we provide templates for the budget. Um, you'll see in relation to the project description um, uh, other supporting documents, this is optional. Um, this can be up to five pages of optional documents you think would help make the case for your project proposal. This could include a PowerPoint, a worksheet, a budget narrative, photos, mock-ups. We've had draft agendas submitted in the past. Um, really, it's up to you. Um, but we will note that this should only be five pages in total. So if you're using different mediums, we request that you combine them all into one final document to upload. Another required document is the resume or CV of all of the core team members. These should be no longer than two pages each, um, and we ask you to provide the CV for each of the three core team members. One of the very, very important documents that you will submit is the budget worksheet. This is required, and it's required that all of the applicants use the budget template we provide on the application portal. So you'll see here that you can go ahead and update, or excuse me, download the template. Go ahead and click into it. I'm having some technical difficulties with Excel at the moment, um, but this is where you are able to download um, the template for it. And like I mentioned before, we'll be having a webinar, um, it's webinar three that's focused on budget and we'll walk through that template. But this is one of those required documents and also a document we provide and ask you to fill out. So as you're going through, it's especially important to think about the amount of money that you'll be requesting and that it's matching all of the documents previously describing your budget. So if you include that in your project description, make sure that your budget worksheet is reflecting the same information as well. Like I mentioned earlier, applicants can apply for up to 10,000 US dollars. Um, but really, you should only be applying for up to what is needed for you to implement your project work plan. So as we go into the budget um, webinar, I'll talk more about that. But keep that in mind as you start to think about, I know over the three weeks, you're probably going to be working on this prior to that. Um, so start to think about and do research on what it is that you'll be requesting in terms of your budget. For the last required uploaded document, we request that you upload the photo page of the passports for all of your core team members. Your passports must be valid through January 2020 in order to attend the kickoff workshop. So it's really, really important that you do upload those documents as well. Finally, in the last section of the application, you'll see is the terms and conditions section. And we ask that you check off all of these boxes. 
um, in order to confirm your agreement and participation in the YPL Small Grants Program as you submit a proposal. Once you are finished completing the form um, and uploading the documents, like I said earlier, make sure that you have everything ready to go because this form you cannot come back to um, once you submit, that's your submitted version. And you are only able to submit one application for a project idea. So you cannot have multiple team members across um, projects. Only You're only allowed um, one application per person. So once you submit the form, you'll receive a submission confirmation upon clicking submit. You'll also receive an email as well. Please be sure that you receive this notification. And if you don't, let us know and we can check in the back end of our system and see um, what held up the application submission and let you know kind of where your application um, is and if you need to make any edits to it to ensure that it's submitted. So again, if you've received all of the above and you have the email, um, you've uploaded everything, that is when your application is submitted and completed. I know I talked about this earlier, but it's really important that you have all of the requirements in order to make your submission highly competitive amongst all of those that are submitting. So now that we've looked at the application itself, I want to take you back to the web page for the program. Um, a great resource that we have available for you is right here in the What Makes a Project Successful proposal or excuse me, what makes a, sec a successful project proposal? So here um, you'll find a downloadable PDF and this is what it looks like. It walks through some tips and tricks to preparing a proposal. It's really a kind of a step-by-step -step guide. Um, so we do recommend that you check that out as you start to develop your project proposal and application. Um, it's very, very useful to help you not only think about your proposal for the small grants program, but also if you're ever thinking about applying for other potential grant opportunities, um, this could be a helpful resource for you as well. Before you begin your application, you have to think about what it is that you're applying for and how are you going to demonstrate your idea, the concept, the project um, that you're trying to to implement? How are you going to have something that's measurable, um, that you can see the outpat, uh, impact, excuse me, through an actionable work plan? So it's really important to remember that the grant applications are competitive. Um, everything you submit is going to be reviewed as a part of a whole package. So all of those uploads um, that we request in the application portal, as well as the information that you provide in the application online form. We review those as a package, so it's really important to make sure the information is correct, comprehensive, compelling, and understandable to an outside reader. As with many things, project selection is, um, like I said, competitive, and submissions really need to have a proposal that meets the criteria and is available to explain, um, or excuse me, able to explain the impact of the work that you were aiming to complete. So you'll see in the different FAQ six sessions, or excuse me, sections, how um, and the different uh, number of projects that will be selected as well. So if you have questions about that, the FAQ section is a great place to look. Um, I will say that as you're going through your project proposal, and it's mentioned here as well, um, make sure that you're um, thinking realistically it's, and innovatively. It's really exciting and it's within the small amount of time. So the, the project implementation period is really only six months. Um, so we want to make sure that you're being realistic about the cost for the project and also the timeline in which you're able to complete the project. Really, really think through the budget and also um, your team's ability to accomplish the set out goals. 
um, some things that we've received feedback on from our 2018 recipients is that um, the timeline is actually fairly short and you might not think about once you're applying um, the different approval process that you might need in order to accomplish your project or um, the the time it may take to accomplish one piece of your project. So keep that in mind as you're going through and kind of creating your work plan or timeline for your project. So projects can focus on multiple issues or areas, um, but should really aim to demonstrate how the project itself addresses all of those that you're trying to address. Um, so really think about something um, and propose something that is, like I said, um, realistic, manageable within the time period, um, and it also isn't too big or too costly as you're going through. One of the most important pieces, and I can't stress this enough, as you're developing your project um, proposal is to really tell the story of your project idea. Keep it really factual and clear, but also compelling. Um, help the reviewer understand what opportunity you are trying to provide or what challenge you are trying to overcome with your project idea. I know I've spoken to many of you um, that have joined us today and you have great ideas and really outline for the reviewers what those ideas are and why it is that you're trying to overcome a specific challenge or address something in your community. So kind of tips on that is to really think about it holistically and illustrate those different pieces in your proposal. So questions that I like to ask when looking at a proposal is, um, first, what is the issue or challenge that you're over, trying to overcome? Um, second, why is it important? Why are you developing or implementing a project to address this particular challenge or um, area of need, if you will? Another question to ask is what work has already been done? Is there anything that you are able to build off of? Um, looking at that. The last two questions I like to ask are, how are you going to solve or address the issue with the small grant funds? So making it clear why the funds are important to your project. And then lastly, how can the work you would accomplish through the program be utilized post the grant period? So what does this project look sustainability wise? Um, after the funding is completed, are there other opportunities that you can pursue to keep the funding or to keep the program, excuse me, going? So we've gone over a lot of the different tips um, or excuse me, the requirements and resources for the application. I did wanna provide you all with a few more tips um, just from Cultural Vista's side. We work on a lot of different proposals, especially for grants and also read a lot of different small grant proposals. And we're here for a resource as you all, as you go through. So please keep the, the line of communication open. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, but these are just some things that I thought you might be wondering as we've gone through the webinar. One of the most important questions I bet that you have is, what is the YPL Small Grants Program looking for? So the program really is looking for a project, like I mentioned, that is associated with one of the four YPL pillar themes. So those are education, environment and resource management, civic leadership, and economic and social development. The project itself does not have to directly align with those, but it is important to have an association with one of those themes. Another piece of this is feasibility. The application that you submit really needs to show that you have a plan for the six months of the implementation period of the program and that your budget matches what you are proposing and is reasonable. One of the biggest pieces of reflection that we've received from previous grantees is to really keep it realistic in project size and also have a good understanding of the time period and the timeline that you're proposing. So the time period being that six month implementation period and then the timeline to which your work plan will follow. We really do encourage everyone applying to think 
more long term and this kind of jets under the sustainability and scalability piece um, but asking yourself how can the small grants program further a project along or get a project off the ground that can be continued after the funding period is over. So either plans or ideas for your project to continue to impact your target community past the funding time frame or how the project could grow in size or impact. This, help, this helps to indicate a thoughtful and strategic innovative idea um, for a project. So do think about that as you're kind of going through your project proposal development. Program impact is a big piece that we look at. The submitted proposal should really describe the target community of impact um, and how the project will positively impact that population. It's also, I keep saying all these things are really important and they all kind of go hand in hand, um, but do demonstrate what you are doing in the time frame and that you can describe the continuation of the project. Um, and we do welcome projects that have an emphasis on regional cooperation. Um, that can be harder during the planning and implementation process, um, but it is also an opportunity to increase communication skills, project management skills, and impacting more communities. So like I mentioned earlier, you're welcome to do a cross-country, um, cross-community project if you have another YPL member or someone else that you think um, would be a great partner for your project, a, a core team member, and they're in another country. Um, we have had cross-country collaboration in the 2018 iteration. Um, so we do encourage that and feel free to go ahead and be innovative and, and take advantage of that. So I've mentioned our 2018 projects a few times. On the website, I'll scroll down, here is where you can see the different projects that happened in 2018. If you're looking for different examples of projects that have been funded previously, um, this is a great section to learn about those. Also, if you click in to them, you can see the Read More button. This will take you to their project of the month. So each month throughout the implementation period, we actually feature a different project on the YPL social media page. So that's just the Facebook page at the moment, the main Facebook page. Um, but we give information and background on the different projects. So if you're interested in learning more than just that little sentence on the website, go ahead and click into that and you can read um, the write-up about each of the projects. So we have reached the end of my side of the presentation, um, and I'll go ahead and address any questions we've had come through in the chat so far. Um, but I do want to let you know we're open to any more questions that you may have, so feel free to type them in the chat box, and I will do my best to answer. And if I'm unable to answer, I'll make sure that you get the, the information via email. I'm going to go ahead and scroll through all of our questions quickly. Yes, so this question comes from Muñeca. Um, can all three members be YPL 2019 alumni? Of course, there's not um, a limit on the alumni that can be um, within the core team, um, but we do just require that one, at least one, is a YPL alumni. So our second question is, do we include in-kind contributions if we have in the budget worksheet? So Petty, I might ask you to just clarify a little bit further as in um, if in-kind meaning someone donating to your project. So I'll go ahead and ask you to clarify in the chat box. While we're waiting, I'll go ahead and jump to Miyaka's second question. Do we include other sources of funds if we get outside project sponsors? Um, so we do have 
projects that have cost, cost shared in the past, um, and you're welcome to include that in the budget. Um, it will not affect the amount that you're requesting. We really just want to see the amount that you're requesting, but you can include a line in the budget as to the different um, cost shares that you may have. So the next question is from Maura. Does the proposal have to be written? Can it be visual? So the proposal does have to be written in terms of the project abstract and the project description, as well as the online application. Where it can be visual is through the other supporting um, documents that can be uploaded optionally. And you can include a presentation. We've had um, PowerPoint presentations submitted, um, a magazine style um, submission came through. All we ask is that it remains within the five page limit. Um, so yeah, feel free to include visuals, pictures, um, whatever you think tells the story of your project proposal best. So it looks like Swong has asked, can the funds for the program be used to implement stages of the plan after the six months? So we actually ask that the project is completed within the six months um, so that the funds are used at that time. Um, so we do require that everything is completed within the six month implementation period. We have a question from Natalia. Hello all, thanks for all the shout outs. It's so great to see so many of you um, from the 2019 conference online. Natalia's question is, can you be more, can you give more on the core team? So if you tune in next week to the webinar, we'll give a more in-depth um, information on the core team requirements, how to put those teams together, and also the different requirements for each position. So we have a question from Ayla. Can we Skype into the program kickoff workshop from overseas? Unfortunately, no. We require that all three core team members be at the kickoff workshop in Auckland. This being because we do a lot of different project um, and program, excuse me, project editing and also a lot of brainstorming. So we give you those that have been selected the chance to, to really review their project. We give them a few um, tools for the implementation period. And so we have a couple of different steps that are actually um, really imperative at the kickoff workshop. So we do request that all three members are present. Okay, so we've got a follow up from Petty. In kind to, in terms of utilizing our personal resources that we have and may not plan to charge to the budget. No, you do not need to list that um, in the budget document itself. And you'll see um, within that budget document, once you, I'm gonna see if I can get it to load. Been having issues with Excel lately, so it's definitely my computer, but we'll do our best to get it up there for you all. So while I'm waiting for that to load, I'll go ahead and jump into the next question. So our next question is from Nathan. He said he saw in the budget worksheet that items over 50 US dollars need to be itemized and described. Do we also need to provide quotations? So we do recommend that you do your research and are able to provide documentation um, because as you go along, um, those selected projects, we will have a reporting um, a different reporting mechanism for projects that are selected each month, and you'll need to provide receipts for the purchases um, that you've used the funds for. So 
you, at this point, you don't need to provide quotations in your budget, but we do recommend that you do your research and that as you go along, those that are selected, because we'll compare the purchases to what was proposed in the budget. So once your budget has been approved, that's what you work with throughout the program implementation period. So it's really important that all of those items are listed. Um, for instance, if it's um, volunteer stipends or say you have to buy um, printing materials. One of our projects from 2018 was a um, children's book and they had different printing materials as well as different program or excuse me book fees and so we had them list those out so that as we went along in the implementation period they could track their budget um, so it is important that you have those items listed that you think that you'll need um, and then also being able to provide that documentation for those projects that are selected later on um, for those interested in knowing more about the budget, Webinar 3 will go into a lot more detail into all of that information. So our next question is from Meitaka. Did you say that only three projects will be selected for funding? If selected, are all core team members required to attend the workshop? Um, so we will so select up to 12 projects. Um, not three, 12, and you'll have three core team members. So each project will have three core team members, and all three core team members are required to attend the workshop. Um, all of our alumni from 2018 iteration has said how valuable the workshop is, um, and we do a lot of brainstorming as well as skill building in that workshop. So. Like I mentioned earlier, we do require um, all of the, the core team members to attend. Swung, um, we can go ahead, I'll go ahead and contact you offline about your question. Looks like we have some, a few more questions typing in the box. Absolutely. So the contact details. It's a great, great question, Ayla. You beat me to the end of the presentation. So you'll see the contact details are me. <laughs> um, the best email to email all of your questions to is the YPL grants at culturalvistas.org. Um, at this moment, um, I know there are a few of you that have questions and um, we've been out of the office due to travel, but we'll be getting all of that information to you um, as it comes in. So go ahead and email all of your questions to that email address. Not a problem. Um, we have another question from Natalia. Her question is, is there a set exchange rate in US dollars that we should use when estimating our expenses? So we will provide information in the third webinar about how to, um, what site we use in terms of the exchange rate. Um, it does change because as we go along, the period of time for the implementation is six months. So it will vary going through and we'll provide more information on that um, in that webinar. Go ahead and give a chance for any last minute questions. I'll also mention, um, so like I said earlier, we will be putting this webinar and all of the webinars will be recorded. We'll be putting them online. Um, so for those of you who have questions that come up after the conclusion of today's webinar or as you're reviewing the recording, um, feel free to send them to the email on the screen, yplgrants at culturalvistas.org, and we'll be sure to address them um, via email to you as well, and then also in the following week's webinar. That way, um, a lot of times people have the same questions, so we'll be sure to talk about them in the following week's webinar. Awesome, awesome, lots of good questions, guys. Um, so. Like I mentioned, don't forget to tune in next week. We'll be talking about organizing a project and the core project team. We'll take a deeper dive into what the responsibilities of each core team member will be um, and also some 
some tidbits on organizing your project as you go along. Um, it will be hosted at the same time. So it's 9 a.m. New Zealand time on Tuesday, the 2nd of April, 2019. And then we'll get that recording from today up on the website tomorrow. Um, end of day. So as many of you know, I'm based in DC. Um, so we'll do our best to get it up as quick as possible as it's the end of day here um, and your morning the next day. So any last minute questions? Awesome. It looks like we don't, oh, maybe one from Sabrina. Not a problem. I'm so glad that all of you have been able to join. I hope that everything is well in your home countries and that you all are doing great. Many, many thanks um, for tuning in and I hope to see you all next week.